Um, hi, everyone. Um, this video will discuss about uh, transformation on block matrices. Uh, today, the topic is shared complement. Um, so given that a matrix X, a big one that can be partitioned into four sub-blocks, A, B, C, D, for example, you have a matrix X here, and this is A, B, C, D. So what we're going to talk about is a transformation of uh, sub-blocks of X into another, another matrix that is called shoe complement. The definition goes like this. A uh, shoe complement of the block D in X is, is given by uh, take, taking the matrix A minus B D inverse C, okay, as long as the matrix D is invertible. And uh, we can show in the subsequent slide, uh, slide that determinant of the whole block can be written as the product of determinant of D and determinant of the shoe complement in D. Okay. We also have another definition of the shoe complement of A in X, in the big matrix X. It is defined as, it is defined as D minus C A inverse B as long as the matrix A is invertible. And again, similarly, the determinant of X can be written as determinant of A times the determinant of true complement of A in X. Uh, let's take a look how we come up with the true complement. It actually arises when you solve a linear system by using the Gaussian eliminations. So the setting goes like uh, when you have a matrix X uh, that uh, has four blocks, okay, and you want to solve uh, the system A, X, A, B, C, D, X1, X2, okay, I'm going to just, I'm just going to remove this. You want to solve this linear system given Y1 and Y2, which is uh, a block vector, you want to solve for X1 and X2. The thing is, uh, when you write down the when you write down the equation, you have two sets of equations: a x one plus b x two equals y one, and um, c x one plus b x two equals y two. Remember that in this notation, x y and x two uh, are not necessarily um, you know the the scalar the 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 the, the, uh, the first entry or the second entry of x, but it means that the first block of x. The, the second block of the vector x. So suppose the matrix D is invertible. Then we can take a look at this and we get rid of x2 first. So what you're going to do is that you're going to uh, say that the x2 equal y2 minus c x1 and then and then you you assume that D is invertible so you can write x2 as a function of y2 and x1. Then once we get rid of, uh, we, we try to get rid of x2 by putting this expression back into this equation. So then you can read a x1 plus, plus you put, you put uh, x2 here, and then you arrange the equation a little bit. Then you group uh, x1 together, you get the coefficient of x1 that turns out to be the true complement of A in, in the big matrix. So once you get this, of course, the solution is, um, this, we just, I mean, if, if this guy that turns out to be the true complement, so when the true complement is invertible, uh, we call, uh, let's use this notation as, Let's use this one as S. So your X1 is actually uh, S inverse Y1 minus S inverse B, D inverse Y2. So remind, remind that uh, according to this uh, Gaussian elimination, we have assumed two things. We have, ass we have assumed that D is invertible. And we also assume that this expression that is that that's called true complement of A is also invertible. Then from that we can just arrange the solution of the linear system that x1 
is going to be s inverse y1 minus minus this and for for x2 we we just use the we just use the previous result that x2 we just use the expression of x1 and put it back into the expression of x2 all right so plug here to here then um then we can write that uh, x2 is d inverse y2 minus d inverse c x1. So you put everything here. So when you arrange the term, you group y2 together, and that's the expression that you get. From that, from that, it turns out that you can arrange, now you can basically solve the linear equation. Now you can write x in terms of y. So let me just uh, let me just write it down again. So, so you can write this as some matrix time y1 and y2, and then you have solved the you have solved the linear system. So this is gonna be s inverse and minus s inverse b d inverse, right? And for the second row, that's going to be d inverse c s inverse, and then d inverse plus d inverse c s inverse b d inverse. Okay, so what does it mean from this uh, result? So when you have the block x, the big x times vector x equals y, now now you have solved the equation you can write x the small x in terms of y so that means this matrix is actually the inverse of x the inverse of the block matrix x so from there it turns out that we can express the inverse of the block matrix using the expression of the shear complement so um so this is a matrix x right so the inverse is given by this. So you see that uh, one interesting result is that the inverse of the 1, 1 block is actually the inverse of the true complement. Okay? Like when you have a big, big matrix X, after you inverse it, after you inverse it, the leading 1, 1 block in the inverse is actually the inverse of the shear complement. Um, <clears throat> from these results, um, uh, where, uh, that from these result, and also uh, after we uh, after we express the matrix X as um, LDU decomposition, LDU decomposition means that you can factor out a matrix in terms of a lower triangular times diagonal times upper triangular. So you have triangular system and you have the like the term in the middle as the uh, as a diagonal. In this one, in this one you have upper, you have block diagonal and you have lower triangular. So this allows us to say to say the previous result that we mentioned here that the matrix X, the determinant of X is determinant of um, the matrix D times determinant of shear complement. Now let's take a look at this expression. Okay, so notice that, um, notice that this is triangular system. When you have a triangular matrix, the determinant of this guy equals to the product of the diagonal element, which is one. So determinant of this term is one, determinant of this term is one. What about the block diagonal? Everyone knows that um, <clears throat> if you have a diagonal matrix, the determinant is the product of the diagonal element. So the determinant of this guy is gonna be the product of the product of the determinants of the block diagonal terms. Okay, so that's complete the proof that determinant of x is determinant of its shear complement and the de determinant of d. So this is the shear complement of d in x.
Um, now, uh, this is the sure complement of any uh, any square matrices A, B, C, D. Whenever whenever B and C are transposed to each other, the matrix X is symmetric, right? So now we're gonna go through a special case when the matrix X is um, PDF positive semi definite, and then by assumption um, positive semi definite is um is a class that uh, only assumes symmetri symmetry symmetry in x okay so when when x has this form uh it's symmetric right the true complement of d in in the matrix x is going to be a minus b d inverse b transpose so it's like it's going this way and the true complement of a True complement of A in X is going to go this way. D minus B transpose A inverse B. So it go this way. Okay. So we have this result that we're going to show quickly. Um, um, because, uh, because of the LDU decomposition, uh, the result from this page when you um, apply apply to the special case where b and c are transposed to each other so you now you have uh, ldu decomposition so it's become uh, ldl transpose um so first we have the result that x is positive definite even only if or even only if this block is positive definite and the sure complement of d in x How, how, how can we get that result? So uh, we take a look at the form of X here and we can notice that this is actually um, the uh, congruent transformation because it takes a form of something U as upper triangular matrix, right? And this is, um, this is some matrix. Let me call it the, uh, let me call it something else. Um, let me call it M, all right? And this is actually U transpose. So you can take a look at this as a congruent transformation on M. Okay. Um, so we know that uh, when you have a congruent transformation, X is a congruent transformation on M. So the congruent transformation preserves the number of positive eigenvalues, the number of negative eigenvalues, the number of uh, zero eigenvalues. So as long as M positive is positive definite, as long as M is positive definite, moreover, the matrix U is full rank. How, how, how do I know that it's full rank? Because um, it has identity in the diagonal. So the determinant of U is obviously one, so U is full rank. When, when U is full rank, so it means that the rank of X depends on the rank of M. So that's why M is positive definite, even only if X is positive definite. And because M contains uh, two uh, block diagonals, so M is positive definite, even only if each block is positive definite. So we have proved the first result. Mm -hmm. um, so take a look at the special case. So when when uh, the sure complement is only positive semi definite, all right, that means your m, that means your m is positive semi definite, and that makes the matrix X positive semi definite. Okay. Um, for the last result, it just follow from the previous the, so the the last result is a determinant of X is going to be the de determinant of D times the determinant of the true complement. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now let's uh, take a look at, uh, at, at, at the expression. Because of the... <clears throat> uh, when we take a look at, the, at this expression, all right, the true complement of D in X is this. So if you just subtract uh, true complement from A, so you get A minus SD. And then the right-hand side becomes this. 
we know that this is actually another congruent transformation on the D, D inverse. As long as D is, um, when, when D is positive definite matrix, so is the D inverse. Then this guy is positive semi-definite. Once we got that, um, so recall the definition of um, recall the definition of comparing two matrix in in a matrix sense. So we say that um, uh, recall to this. Um, we say that M is bigger than N whenever M minus N is positive semi definite, right? So once we got this, it means that the matrix A is bigger than the true complement SD. Okay, so so this is a fact. This is a fact. As long as the true complement is positive definite and D is positive definite, the block A is always bigger than the true complement. We're gonna use this result in in the next uh, slide. So all the previous fact that we just mentioned. Uh, have the similar analogous result when you consider the true complement of A in X instead. All right, so these two bullets. Now, um, let's, uh, let's, let's see how you can apply the true complement in the context of uh, learning Gaussian random vector. Suppose you have um, random vector Z that you can partition into X and Y. X and Y are jo jointly Gaussian, and X, both X and Y are still vectors. So in the context of that, um, whenever, because the X and Y are jointly distributed, so given Y, knowing information about Y should help you learn something about X. So we have the term conditional covariance matrix of X given Y. All right? So in that, uh, in that theory, so if if this guy is normal, all right, x and y are jointly normal with covariance sigma, and you can just uh, partition sigma into four blocks. The one one block is going to be the covariance in x. The two two block is covariance of y, and the off diagonal term is the cross covariance between x and y. So from that theory, it, uh, it has a result. It can be proved that uh, the conditional covariance of x given y is actually the true complement of covariance of x in sigma. So it goes like this. So it's a true complement of this one in this one. So it's going to be sigma x minus sigma xy times sigma y inverse times sigma xy transpose. And that's, uh, that is the result that we show here. 1, 1 block minus this times this inverse times this. Okay. And because, um, because we have previously uh, that we show that when you compare uh, with this result, we, we, show, we show that uh, A is always bigger than a is always bigger than SD. A is always bigger than the shoe complement. So in this case, when you apply that, it means that the, the sigma x, the 1, 1 block, is always bigger than the shoe complement. But in this context, the shoe complement has a meaning of conditional covariance. So it means that once you know why, once you have some values y, information of y, it helps you reduce the conditional covariance of x. Mm -hmm. And this is how we see sure complement in, in applications. You have, um, we use it in, uh, in the context of Gaussian random vector. We have seen it in elimination of variable when you solve a linear system that uh, split into two sets. And the shoe complement has some relation with the inverse of block matrix. Okay. Uh, let me just continue with uh, two more important results uh, uh, regarding the matrix inverse. Uh, or probably we split into the next video then. So I'll, I'll, I think I'll stop the, the topic uh, of this video just for the shoe complement.